Okay, testing the strength of my I beam hull, rowing hull. It's 20 pounds and I'm 170. And it's not even shaking. Okay, test number one, wedge rower. Prototype number one. Um, testing it on this lake. So according to theory, um, if I can get this thing to go between three and four miles an hour, um, it should get up on plane uh, and start the hydroplane. Um, and if it can get on hydroplane, it'll accelerate and me not being an Olympic swimmer, um, if I can get to eight miles an hour, it will be a success because the uh, Olympic world record is around between 10 and 11 miles an hour for a um, long and skinny haul. So if I can go eight miles an hour, then an Olympic athlete could break ele uh, 11 miles an hour. And I actually did test this and First of all, this boat is designed to demonstrate the principle that you want to get on hydroplane. Um, instead of having one long hull, you have two hulls that have a high aspect ratio, and this will get on plane faster than uh, a typical uh, ski boat that has an aspect ratio where it's at least three times as long as it is wide. Um, the boat is 50 pounds. I can lift it over my head. Um, it could be lighter, but... Um, and uh, you sit in it like, like this. And... Uh, so the, the first test was using a kayak paddle. And... The problem with this is uh, I didn't account for the initial drag being so high. Um, the water line on this boat, when it's resting with me on it, is just below this top surface. So that means all of this wet transom is is drag, and I had instead of like one transom, I have two transoms that are creating drag. So literally, when you paddle, you're dragging all this water behind you. And that's why it didn't work. Um, so, and also the other thing is, I kind of went overboard on the uh, aspect ratio. Um, when you're on plane, only about the last half of this will be wet. But this is five foot long and that would be, uh, that would be a five to one ratio. Um, but you only need about three to one. So I can actually cut this down here at this rib and at that rib, and then I can take that I can build another extension here, um, kind of like a seaplane. And have another wedge. Literally, if I take this wedge and rotate it and put it here, it would have a step here, about an inch or so. Um, that would that would be more like a seaplane, which has already been proven to work. Um, so in that case, it might actually work. Uh, this was too too the initial drag was too high. So then I thought about adding a motor to it, uh, turning it into a really fast uh, motorboat. Um, the problem in, with that is I didn't. This doesn't have enough buoyancy to. Um, to support more than an extra 40 pounds. So if I had a powerful enough motor to make it get on plane, it would probably have enough buoyancy. So not every idea that you will have, or not every assumption that you make will be correct, um, but you won't know where you're right and where you're wrong until you actually build something and test it. 
So um, I'm glad I built this and I'm glad I discovered that although I have increased the, the upside potential for speed, the high end potential for speed, I made it harder to get over the hump with the, uh, the drag on the, on, the, um, on the wet transoms. So, um, but there is a, there is a solution. And, uh, and so now I know what to do on test number two. Okay, one final comment, because I know a lot of people are gonna ask this. Why don't I just make it just exactly like a seaplane float? The reason that a seaplane float is the shape that it is, is because it also has to be aerodynamic in flight. This will not, is not gonna be attached to an airplane, so it doesn't have to be as aerodynamic in flight. So, um, so that is why a, ski, a, a seaplane float is so narrow, like, like uh, almost like a, a hydroplaning uh, catamaran hull or whatever. Um, but in this case, um, the um, if I if I just change this from five foot wide to three foot wide, it actually should uh, be actually more ideal. Th this is overboard, um, and uh, but if I make it three foot wide and I add the wedge in the back, it should be ideal. That would be the ideal shape okay and the last comment that i would like to make is i really don't think i could ever get this thing to hydroplane with a kayak paddle um i think the best propulsion method for this is something that has high impulse so that would be uh like nine foot sculling oars um because in this case if you can if you can get the boat to hydroplane in one really strong pull the boat will actually glide while you're doing your recovery stroke and reaching back towards your feet. Um, so that, that is the potential advantage of this is that uh, if it does if it does remain on hydroplane while you're recovering yourself, getting ready for stroke number two, um, then this thing will will be extremely fast. I still don't know if it'll work, but it's worth a try. <laughs>